by fans of high quality entertainment. So in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, some of my recent CD purchases and maybe a little mini review for some albums. And also, I wanted to get some feedback uh, on my live chats that I'd like to do every Saturday or Sunday, but it looks like more people, at least at the moment, aren't prefer Sunday compared to Saturday. But, you know, everybody lives in different parts of the world, different time zones. And so I want to make, I want to do a weekly live chat at the best time for most of my viewers. And so in my community on both of my channels, Canadian Stub Muffin and this one, in, instead of leaving a comment about it below or below, please go to the... Uh, poll on either channel. I'll have a link below for them. And just vote which day works best for you if you'd like to be part of my live chat. So, so far, uh, 78 votes. And what I usually have been doing is Sundays at 3 p.m. And that's the second least favorite time. And yet, you know, yesterday I was doing a live chat with uh, Rants Rock Warehouse and Stephen Schnee from the, uh, the CD Junkie. And I think the limit of people watching was like 20. <laughs> and I even joked during the uh, live stream, you guys think I'm pretty popular. Well, we've got 20 viewers. <laughs> but I think one of the issues is, as you can see, a lot of, like half of the people would prefer Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And, uh, you know, of course, there's others that choose different times. I'm not going to be able to satisfy everybody with the time I do the live chats. But so far, it's kind of looking... I might even do one other poll with different times for, for Sunday. Maybe even 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. Sunday. And also on my... Uh, I just posted this a couple of hours ago on this channel. And so far, it's a little different. Uh, most people prefer Sunday at 12 p.m. Eastern Daylight. And then Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So, yeah. Please, you know, and just on, on the one poll, either channel. Please vote. Because, like I said, I would like to do a live, like... Uh, for Sundays or Saturdays, do a one hour, one, one and a half hour live chat because I've been really enjoying them late, lately. Lots of good questions and laughs, usually. <laughs> so, like I said, you can talk about it in the comment section, but also, please remember to vote, because that's what I'm going to be going by. And uh, just an update on my cat, Middens. As some of you know, Middens was very sick about three days ago. And she is doing much better now. There she is laying there. Uh, she is eating and drinking water and, uh, like I said, doing much better. Kind of back to her old self, very, very slowly. So thank you for all of the kind words. Okay, now on to music. Some of this I've talked about before, but I just wanted to talk about it again. And there's a couple of uh, CDs I have not shown yet that I got. First up, I did do an unboxing of this, and I've listened to probably half of it. And I will say, it's wonderful. Uh, Excellent uh, remaster of all of the albums. And I, I would say uh, C from 1969 is probably my favorite Rascals album. Highly underrated album. And Once Upon a Dream is Great. And then their debut, The Young Rascals, of course, and Groovin'. I still need... Oh, I d actually did listen to uh, Freedom Sweet. And it was good, really good. Although... Uh, 
Yeah, it, it contains People Got to Be Free and a Nun LP hit single, A Beautiful Morning, is included. But there's one side that's like a, I think, a 13-minute drum solo, which is okay, but who wants to listen to a drum solo, <laughs> uh, you know, without actually seeing it? And then side four is more of a jam, which kind of really doesn't go anywhere. But the, the first of the two vinyl records of Freedom Suite are really good. So, yeah, highly recommend it. And, you know, I'm, I'm mainly talk, talking lately about this band, Can, but I just wanted to mention I still absolutely love Ween. I'm really into them lately. And King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. I now have four albums. This one. And I love all of them. Pretty much equally. Although, if I had to choose one, this would be my favorite. And the latest I got is Infest the Rat's Nest, which is kind of like speed metal. I've played it twice. Speed metal isn't my favorite genre by, <laughs> by any means. But with King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, I love it. It's not my favorite. It won't ever be my favorite album by, by them, but I've enjoyed it. And once again, I'd like to thank Nicholas Pearl, who sent me the Beach Boys Friends along with their album 2020. And I've only played 2020 once, and I loved it almost as much as Friends. And with Friends, uh, the very first time I listened to it is with a CD exchange a few months back, and I didn't really care for it. I thought it was really cheesy and <laughs> whatever. But then, you know, I had, because we were doing reviews with this CD exchange, I had to listen to it more. And I got into it, and I love it as much as Pet Sounds. So, yeah, two great albums there. And Friends is only about, I think it's less than 25 minutes long. <laughs> but it does have some bonus tracks. Now, in the early 70s, I was a big, big fan of Uriah Heep. Uh, the first album I ever bought was The Magician's Birthday, and I became a fan. And then I bought Demons and Wizards, which is probably my favorite Uriah Heep album that I've heard. And I do have those. And then, you know, their later albums kind of were a bit disappointing, and I finally gave up on them with uh, probably around the time of Return to Fantasy or High and Mighty. I think High and Mighty was the, first, the last album I bought by them. And I never heard their earlier albums until, once again, doing a CD exchange a few months back, and I was really, really impressed with their debut. Uriah Heep, very heavy, very humble. Of course, this is the UK cover. And that's the Canada and US cover. I like both of them. And I never realized all these years that that's actually the lead singer, David Byron. He's not looking too good there. <laughs> yeah. Um, Gypsy is just a classic. Uh, Come Away, Melinda, a cover song that they do, and it's just, just amazing. And so, yeah, and it's got uh, CD2, an al alternate, very heavy, very humble. And I even kept the hype sticker, aren't you impressed? Yeah. 
I definitely want to get more of the early Uriah heat. Salisbury and look at yourself. And one or two more. Comes with a nice booklet. Yeah, that's the way it is. It's sideways. <laughs> Thumbnail. And I received this. I ordered this a little while back and I got it probably maybe almost two weeks ago. It is number one in heaven, 45th anniversary edition. Double CD with bonus tracks newly remastered and sparks approved and the thing is with the other which was kind of recent number one in heaven there was like a on academy award performance there's like a drop off which uh was kind of you know disappointing for, for that remaster whatever they did Maybe it was a needle drop, I don't know. But this sounds, this is highly recommended if uh, you want the best sound. And I did order the uh, Noel uh, is it Dancing is Dangerous? It's an, an album that Ron and Russell wrote and did the music for, for the singer. Back in 1979. There they are, Ron and Russell. Definitely one of my favorite Sparks albums. And more, a school troll. It comes with the lyrics. <laughs> Here they are with Giorgio Mortar. Doesn't Ron look happy? <laughs> yeah, so very happy with that. And there you can see the uh, bonus tracks. And as uh, some of you know, I've been going on and on about this band called Can. I'd always known about them for many years, just never really, I might have listened to them a little bit and then just wasn't impressed with them, but they are now, at the moment, I think my, my third favorite band after the Beatles and Sparks, and I play the, I'm still playing them, probably 70% of what I listen to is Cam, if not more. So I've got now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten can CDs or albums. And this one is actually their, it was never released, but it was recorded in 1968 and then finally released, I believe, in 1981. And it is really good. It's called Delay. There was a delay in releasing it, I guess. And this is with their uh, first singer, Malcolm Mooney, on vocals. And I love it. At some point, you know, it's going to be a few more months, but at some point, and I want to get all of the Can albums even right time and out of reach, which I guess aren't quite as good as some of the other ones. But I want to get all of their studio albums and then... Like I said, in a few months, do a uh, ranking. This, I, I've played this probably, along with Future Days, the most. It's their 
official debut, monster movie, and yeah, like the 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 side two song "You Do Right," which is a, over twenty minutes long. There's elements of that song where the music sounds like uh, Tool. Seriously, it's like they, they were so far ahead of their time. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll say one thing with Can, if you listen to the album the first or second time and you can't connect with it, please don't give up because I almost gave up on a couple of albums. And I'm glad I listened to, to them more. I did like this on the first lesson, but I grew to absolutely love this. And sometimes I think it might be my favorite Can album at the moment. And the first one I heard, of course, was Tego Mago, double CD. I hadn't played this in a while until the other, the other night. It's like, oh my God, this is so good. Why am I not playing this one more? <laughs> And it does get very experimental on the last uh, uh, couple of songs, or last three songs. It's pretty crazy, but it's still so, so good. And these I just need to play more. I've played them maybe two, two times, three times. It's just not enough time in the day. And when I do play Can, I'm usually reaching for Monster Movie or... Uh, future days recently, but I definitely really enjoy all of these soundtracks. And I'll get to the last one at the end. So these are, are in order, except for the last one I bought. Future days, I've played probably over 30 times. This love it. This one I did not like on the first two lessons. You know, and there's going to be a point where I might not like a can album I buy. I'm not forcing myself to like or love any of these. But on the third lesson, I started to really enjoy it. And now I, I really, really like it. Soon over Babaluma. It's just, like I've said before, you kind of expect something to sound a certain way and then you're disappointed it's different. And you just have to warm up to it. And I have. And this one, I'm so impressed with this because after, uh, is it Dano Suzuki, the second singer? When he left, it's like, how can they continue without him? And they did, and they did it. You know, there's vocals on this. It took me a while. You know, I did, I thought it was pretty good on the first lesson. And now I listened to it last night and I love it. I don't know how I'm going to rank some of these albums. Land it. It is superb. Then can the singles I have played and really enjoyed. This one, I've, I've only played maybe half of it. I don't think, you know, I, I'm going to try and play it more, but it's probably my least favorite can live in Paris, 1973. But, you know, I need to play it more. I've only played half of them. <laughs> and this, ladies and gentlemen, I know a lot of the Can fans out there have been saying, oh, you got to get this one, Larry. Well, guess what? I got it. And there, I, I was trying to figure out on YouTube how you pronounce this, and everybody pronounces it a little different. So I'm going to say Eji Bemyasi. And if that's not the way you pronounce it, I don't care. <laughs> and so the first, yeah, the first, the first time I played it, once again, I didn't connect with it. I didn't think it was bad. I didn't think it was good. I just, it sounded like can, but I wasn't that interested in it. And the second time, uh, I might have liked it a tad more, but still didn't connect with it. Last night, I played it for a third time. I loved it. It just takes a few listens. So this is another excellent can album. 
And so the ones I need to get uh, for, you know, the studio albums, I need to get Flow Motion, Saw Delight, Out of Reach, the self-titled Can, and their final album, Back with Mooney, Right Time, R-I-T-E. So that's five more studio albums. And uh, I'd, I'd be curious for the Can fans that are still watching, what are the best albums out of Flow Motion, Saw Delight, Out of Reach, Can, and Right Time? I know that Out of Reach and Right Time are probably the uh, the lowest uh, rated of the Can albums. But I did hear a little bit of Right Time, and it wasn't horrible. And that is it. Uh, I would love your thoughts on everything I've talked about here in the comment section below. And please remember to like the video and be subscribed and check out my community poll about doing a live chat. Um, thanks for watching. Have a great day.